Hi everyone, this is Candy Johnson. I am your host and this is Real Talk uh, brought to you by Real Raw Records. Uh, today we're going to be uh, discussing uh, or addressing the question uh, that I posed um, uh, quite some time back since I've been back on the uh, Google platform. Uh, and I've noticed that uh, there are many debates uh, between uh, atheists and Christians, all right? The other theists don't seem to have much to say, all right? Perhaps their gods don't allow them to get in debates or whatever like that, and uh, so they don't really uh, have much to say, all right? Or uh, perhaps uh, their um, belief system uh, they not it's it, it, it's too shaky. Uh, so the atheists would eat them apart. All right, and so uh, they uh, perhaps I'm just um making observation of what's going on and what ain't going on and. Uh, 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 trying to make some sense of it, all right? Trying to kind of make some sense of the uh, chaos that's going on, all right? And so if what I say, uh, when I'm uh, kind of processing everything in my mind out loud, if, if it don't, if it's not um, completely accurate, uh, don't be mad at me, all right? Don't be mad at me, uh, just, uh, Pardon me, so to speak, because uh, this is throw that in the category of she don't know no better. All right, okay, now give me a little time. I might be a little slow, but when I catch up, I'll be on point. All right, uh, now the, the um, like I said, the atheists and the uh, uh, Christians always at odds with each other. I saw uh. Mm, I saw a, 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 a post uh, on uh, when I got online uh, that G Man had. Uh, uh, he posted that uh, Brett was in a hospital. All right, and um, mm, I got a little something to say about that too. But I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna let that. Uh, I'm gonna let that alone for a second so I can address this uh, Christian versus atheist uh, bout, all right? And um, so anyway, G-Man said that uh, the uh, uh, that Brad King, uh, which is a um, professed believer, um, that uh, he, he's in a hospital, all right? So I commented on the post that I will uh, pray, all right? And uh, when I commented on the post that I will pray, um, another atheist, uh, atheist uh, commented on the post and said uh, that she wished that he died. Uh, that was very rootless and heartless, all right? Mm. Uh, but... She's godless, so what do you expect? No, uh, I'm not trying to say that to belittle her, but uh, even the Bible said that uh, um, this is the type of behavior of people that have no God. So what, G-Man, what the fuck do you expect? Like, really? Uh, why are you even addressing that? That's in compliance with what God said. What do you want her to do? Do something that's... Uh, uh, make God look like a damn fool, uh, uh, because if she didn't, if she wasn't heartless and ruthless, then mm, God's word would not be true. So uh, she doing what she supposed to be doing. What the fuck are you doing attacking her? See, you the one that's out of line because um, the Bible said that we're supposed to love those that hate us. See, you out of line, not her. Uh-oh, it's been a little rocky in here. Y'all know I, uh, I tell y'all all the time because my internet connection so bad. 
Uh, I tell y'all all the time, I'm up here in the mountains. So mm, please excuse if you in one of my broadcasts and uh, it get a little rocky, all right? So it get a little rocky over here, G-Man. Uh, you out of line, Velcro out of line, he came in. He made comments on the on the post that was uh ungodly as well. All right. Both of y'all need y'all act for, all right. Mm, and Candy not the one to do that, but I will extend correction, all right. And and uh, I have to uh, uphold that which is right and which is good. And I, I have to correct y'all in front of the atheists because y'all misbehaving in front of the atheists. Uh, when my kids, I didn't like to embarrass my kids in public, all right, when they would uh, misbehave, okay. But um, I would kind of give them up that look like if you don't sit your ass down, mm, could be some misunderstanding, all right. And, uh, and, and, and if they didn't adhere to that, then I would have to resort to beating that ass in public. Okay. If you embarrass me, I tell my kids, I tell my kids all the time. If you embarrass me in public, I'm gonna tear that ass up in public. Okay. So uh if this is what's going on, if you see me uh kind of rebuke y'all in public, and not that I'm trying to uh embarrass you or anything like that, but I, I tried to uh in all fairness, I tried to get y'all to uh I sent um private message to Bethel, okay, and said that we need to have a private conversation between believers. But since since y'all uh only wanna um uh, indulge in mess and foolishness, y'all never responded to that. See, y'all, I noticed something about y'all. All uh, right, like, mm, mm, I done send messages uh um to uh several people. Uh, for a productive um, conversation and a, um, a cultural conversation and discuss some things, all right, and iron things out, all right. But I noticed with you uh, mess makers, uh, y'all don't want to, um, y'all y'all want to call out people to get into an argument. G-Man, I think you calling out the atheist. Okay, well, I'm calling your ass out, all right. Because uh, I try to contact you and Becca and tell y'all, um, mm, you no, know, try to get something positive, a uh, 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 positive strategy, okay, going. And y'all ignore their, uh, that out, um, my outreach, all right. See, I'm gonna put your ass on blast, all right. Because I'm gonna put you on, I'm gonna put you on blast because um, I can't say. That um, you all are just doing things wrong and never try to make contact with you guys, and um, we try to uh, come to uh, an agreement and understanding about what's wrong and what's right. All right, we, amongst each other, you know, in the body. All right. So, uh, G man, you talking about uh, the atheist is trying to um, cause division. All right. Um, you got to understand, baby. Uh, if you don't want to uh get with the uh, um, you don't think I'm a believer or whatever like that, and so perhaps you don't want to get with me on 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 a positive approach because you're getting so much uh, um attention doing negative shit. All right, that's your pride, that's ego. Y'all both riding on y'all y'all riding on pride and ego. And the Bible specifically, specifically uh, speak against that. All right, the Bible say pride go before a fall. All right, uh, uh, in in the Bible also say that uh, 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 in the last day, in the day of judgment, that uh, God it didn't say nothing about uh, the people that were sinners and unbelievers. That in the last day, He was gonna say. Depart from me, you're a worker of iniquity. I know you are not. I know you're not. He said that uh, it's going to be a lot of people, okay, like y'all. You don't have to continue to fall in this category, but right now, y'all right on up in there. All right, y'all right up in there, okay. 
uh, 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 it said that it, in the last day that it was going to be many that would uh, cry out to him in the day of judgment and say, Lord, we did this in your name and we did that in your name. And he going to tell them, yeah, you did that in my name, but depart from me. You're a work of iniquity. That's sin. You in sin, all right? He going to say, depart from me. You're a work of iniquity. I know you not. That's going to be some crucial shit right there. That's going to be some crucial shit, okay? That's going to be some real crucial shit. Uh, I tell people about regret, all right? Regret is a motherfucker, okay? You spending all this time here, all right, online, um, attacking the unbelievers, attacking the atheists, all right? Yes, the atheists are going to experience some uh, regret as well, okay? But hmm, they're going to experience the same amount of regret you're going to uh, experience uh, because you claim to have known better, all right? And you still are, 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 are doing wrong, okay? So uh, the Bible say to him that knoweth to do wrong to him, it is sin, all right. So you 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 knowingly doing wrong, all right. Okay. Now, as far as the uh, atheists or anti-theists, um, they know they're wrong too. Okay. Uh, so they're gonna experience the same kind of regret. That I'm telling you, that that regret is a motherfucker. That's hell right there. Uh, regret. Um, that regret is. When when the atheists find out that God is, is really real, it's gonna be too late, and um, the shit gonna get it's gonna get real serious real quick. All right, where they talk about uh, all that fantasy land, where's my unicorn? Ah! <laughs> it's gonna get real real, and ain't shit gonna be funny real quick. So um, same thing go for the Christians, okay? While y'all are beating up on the atheists, y'all worrying about all these doctrines, who is the chosen nation uh, of Israel and all kind of bullshit, all right? Y'all worried about the wrong thing. Y'all focus ain't on love like it's supposed to be, all right? It's going to get real, real, and it's going to get real crucial real quick, all right? Uh, I ain't talking about in this, uh, in this dispensation of time. Okay, what I'm saying is, you do it how you wanna. You do it how you wanna, long as you're living, all right. And no day is promised to you. Keep that in mind, all right. Do it how you wanna, so long as you're living, all right. Keyword: so long as you're living, and you do it how you wanna, all right. How be ever, okay. Uh. Mm, you know how mm, shit uh mm, mm, when when the uh when you put a timer on it uh, and uh, um to let you know when the end when it's time to stop all right you put that time on all right and mm, that time will be clicking and um I'm letting y'all know the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. You better spend your time wisely because the clock is ticking. All right. Both you atheists and Christian, you better uh, spend your time wisely because the clock is ticking. All right. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The clock is ticking. All right, both of y'all are doing the same damn thing. Uh, the atheists, um, they think that just because if they say don't know God exists, that he ain't real. All right. Okay. I don't know what. Okay. You can say God ain't real. Don't make me no bit of difference. I'm going to sit back and enjoy his presence. 
are going to sit back and enjoy the exclusive knowledge and wisdom and so forth that he rained down on those that uh, uh, call upon him and, 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 and um, seek him for uh, truth and guidance. Mm, sure. I'm going to just say, sit back and enjoy the ride. All right. So, uh, baby, uh, you can say what you want. Okay. I got this song I wrote called uh, What the Fuck You Say. All right. And uh, I wrote this a hill song because uh, mm, mm, people. <laughs> They so used to uh, manipulating other folk mm, with what they say, all right? And, uh, and so they come at me with that shit, all right? And, uh, and shit, uh, they are uh, mm, try to enforce their opinions up on me, right? And, you know, I'm a little thrown off, all right? So I don't ever comply with what everybody else doing. So every time people come to me and they be like, uh, you no, know, trying to enforce their opinion up on me. And I'd be like, oh, you got me fucked up. Uh, I am not the one, all right? And they're not used to that, okay? They used to people mm, that mm, if they're dominant acting, acting, because these really are cowards that's hoping you comply, all right? They just hoping it, okay? They ain't no leaders uh, or nothing like that. They just, they really cowards that's hoping that other people comply with, with, with uh, what they want and desire, okay? All you gotta do is challenge them on it, all right? And you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about, right? Okay. So uh, anyway, they'll come to me and try to enforce their opinions up, up on me. And I'd be like, if you don't get the fuck up out my face with that, uh, I ain't the one, okay? Uh, people will try to, hey there, Palm. Hey, sugar. Uh, I'm uh, uh, over here getting up on these uh, atheists and, and Christians. And then I'm also not just addressing the atheists and Christians, but uh, mm, what you see going on between the atheists and the Christians is a societal thing. People trying to enforce their uh, beliefs or opinions upon other people. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a very good observation. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever title they use uh, to um, hide behind, you know, uh, it makes it really makes no difference. It's still the same uh, cowardice behavior that's going on. All right, uh, you'll see uh, even in the in the in the commercials. Uh, if say I got shaman toilet tissue I'm selling, and, and the other company got uh, Angel Soft. Okay, you won't ever ever ever. Here, Charmin, whoever owns Charmin Toilet Tissue, saying, um, "We got good toilet tissue, and so does uh, so does Angel Soft. Just pick one, either one, will get your ass clean." <laughs> in, in marketing, that's called suicide. <laughs> hey, I'm Candy. Please buy um, uh, Michael Jackson's album. If you make a commercial for yourself, <laughs> so you're essentially you're you're committing suicide on a marketing. No, let me tell you a secret. Uh see, I see Palm Palm. You gonna have to start paying me for my uh my insight now. <laughs> I'm just diving. Um, but I love to uh, disassemble false beliefs. Okay. Let me tell you something about praise, all right? Uh, and a lot of Christians got this mixed up. They think that we're supposed to just uh, praise God, okay, and not one another, okay? 
uh, but that's totally wrong and, and actually unbiblical, all right? It's against the Bible, all right? Because over and over again in the Bible, it says that we should edify one another, okay? All you Christians that's watching, y'all need to look that shit up. Look that shit up. Uh, look it up in the uh, Greek and Hebrew while you at it. Get your concordance. Invest in your concordance, strong concordance, and learn your shit so you can stop being online, being dumbasses, and representing uh, our daddy uh, fucked up. All right. Anyway, back back to what I was saying. Okay. Edify means to build up and worship. Okay. That's what it means. Okay. Look the shit up. I already did. I'm talking to the Christians that they, they out there uh cussing me out in their mind. Okay. But uh anyway, so Christians have got this uh uh really paganistic idea of worship that you know uh even people that uh have pagan beliefs, they don't believe in worshiping one another. They believe in worshiping only their God, whether it be Buddha, Allah, uh, an idol, a rock, or what else, you know. They believe in only worshiping whatever their God, even if they are polytheists that believe in more than one God, um, they still only believe in worshiping their gods, okay? So all beliefs, uh, religious beliefs, believe in just worshiping their uh, particular God, all right. Uh, but that is not what Chris. See, people wonder why Christians think they uh, have this exclusive knowledge or this exclusive uh, wisdom, or their so their God is, is the best God, or their God is the uh, you know most everything. Because he is. <laughs> First of all, because he is. And the thing that makes him the best and the most awesome <laughs> is that uh, his uh, way is so drastically different uh, than everybody else's. And it's not the, just the difference that makes him so awesome. Um, it's the way that, it's the intricate way that he designs everything, you know, uh, to work. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but he a bad son of a gun. All right. And uh, the way that he designed um, praise to work, okay, we already um, define what praise is. It's worship. It's um, edifying. Okay, if, if, if I can give praise to someone else, all right, I don't have to be um okay praise is like a compliment okay so therefore if you dress real nice palm and i come up on you and i say oh palm i say you you're looking real nice today i i could be in my uh, work clothes and dirty and smudgy and uh looking a mess my hair all over my head but i don't have to be looking good in order to give you a compliment Makes sense, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, in that regard, um, do you know that when I um, extend you a compliment, then that actually lifts me up? Okay. And how does that lift me up? People, since when have you? looked at a person that gave somebody else a, a compliment if it was genuine i ain't talk about the flatterers and the ass kissers no, that's different i ain't talking about that i'm talking about somebody that actually gives um i notice you have these perky people and they're always giving people compliments oh you look nice candy uh such and such oh you're always on time i love that uh you're very punctual you know and they're they're always extending compliments to others, you know, do you frown upon that person, or does that make you respect them even more? Oh, oh yeah, I frown upon him. I say, what the hell does this cat want from me? He must <laughs> want something. <laughs> uh, you may do that. 
but you still will be inclined to give them what they want. Guaranteed. They ain't getting my money, that's for sure. Huh? I said they ain't getting my money. A person that is genuine, um, there's other aspects to it, okay? That you mean to tell me, okay, if you come across a genuine person and they're selling mm, something that you need and could use, you would prefer to purchase that mm, item or whatever from somebody that you know is a wicked person just to say, I don't want to give this nice person my money. No, I'm just joking, Candy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Um, a person that is genuine in their um um lifting people up, giving extending compliments and so forth. Not only would they be uh, genuine in that regard, if they're a genuine person, then um, if they uh, complain about something or uh, something like that, you're more inclined to listen to their complaints because you know that they're not a person that generally complains about things. Mm. Right? Mm. What do you think? I think that makes sense. When I was in the shelter, this is a good example. When I was in the shelter, okay, other people there, there, they were very ungrateful. Those people gave us everything. I came there with nothing, uh, with not even clothing on my back. And I had a vehicle, but I didn't have clothing and such. I had a keyboard. <laughs> Um, cause I saved up and got that up sacrifice, but, um, I didn't even have clothing. Uh, they gave me everything I needed. No, um, in addition to food and shelter. All right. And the people, other people that were there, um, that were in the same predicament or even worse than I was when they came. And here I saw them go from having absolutely, completely nothing. Some people were from off the streets living in the woods, literally in the woods, yeah. under the bridges. And um, they have like a stream uh, uh, that was not too far from the shelter that a lot of people, when they had nowhere to go, they would live uh, up under the embankment. and. Oh God, it was just so horrible. Um, I'm glad I was blessed I didn't never get in that type of predicament. But um, for someone to come from that type of environment where you outside bugs eating you up and uh, good God almighty, um, it's just uh, really sad to think about. But um, it used to piss me off because when they finally, um, because the shelter it was so nice, uh, and they had limited amount of space. Of course, you have more people that are uh, poor and without than, and then they could have enough space for, you know. Um, but it was hard to get in that place, uh, the shelter. That was another blessing I had to tell one day. I got in. <laughs> God is good. God is so good to me. Uh, but anyway, when they got in, finally they got in. You know these idiots that come from out um, from out the street, living in the woods, had the nerve and the audacity to complain about the temperature. It's hot in here. It's cold in here. Bitch, you guys got your motherfucking ass from out the mother of the woods, uh, 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 in the freezing cold, living in the snow, uh, uh, and shit like that. You got nerve and audacity uh, to complain about heat, bitch. Shut your motherfucking ass down somewhere. You know. And I used to go off on them. They used to try to make me take medication for that. 
what think, did they say? What did they say in response when when you told people to uh, appreciate what they have? What did you, What did they say to you after the they people that say shit because people respect candy everywhere I go, everywhere I go, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I go. All right, um, yeah. and even new people. Uh, I guess it's something. Many people have told me something about my the way I carry myself. That even if you just meet mm -hmm. me for the first time. I look like somebody you should respect. <laughs> I don't know what it is. All right. I don't you know got what a, me. You got a strong personality. Yeah. You got a strong personality. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You just, uh -huh. just uh, got to, that's just how you are. You, you can't help it. It's just how you are born, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, I used to wonder why people be like, to, uh, confessing to me. And I'd be like, like out of the blue, strangers. Um, I didn't mean to do that, but uh, I'll be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Like, uh, I don't have, I'm not the boss of anything. Like, <laughs> they would come and just start confessing. I swear to God. Um, but anyway, back to the subject. Uh, we'll get on that one day. But um, that is something strange. I don't know why people think I'm a, a pope or something. I don't know. And they just come and start confessing. Uh, if if they do something wrong. And they thought, even at the shelter, if I, they do something wrong and they thought I heard about it, they'll walk up to me and say, Candy, the only reason that I had this, I'll be like, first of all, I'm not a uh, uh, staff here. It, it, I'm not a guy, so I'm not your the moral police. Um, Y'all come me stop coming to me and confessing because I don't, I'm not, I can't forgive you or your fan. All right. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on here, but they would come to me and confess, and uh, or and or apologize to me, and the situation had nothing to do with me. Okay, back to this conversation. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, okay. So um, mm, mm, mm. the people would come off the street, and they would um, get the complaining and stuff like that. And I would tell them, like, um, you are blessed to be here. Um, where did you, I would, um, you know, kind of put it in their face. Where did you come from? Okay. If they didn't come off from off the street, uh, they would tell me that I was living with my sister and she was acting like a bitch and this and that, this and that, and she put me out. Okay. So then I would put it on their terms. Okay. So I would say, well, could you go and stay with any of your other family members? No, they wouldn't let me stay with them either. They're this and they're that. I said, okay, so you mean to tell me you have nerve enough to disrespect these people that's giving you a place and complain about these what these people doing and not doing, and they at least cared enough about you to provide you a place to live and food to eat. What argument could you have against that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. They would normally say, oh, I ain't think about it like that, you know. Uh, because pe a lot of people don't think. They don't think. Um, and and that, uh, that's a very common problem, people not thinking. They do things. When it, uh, uh, for the most part, when you see people uh, do something fucked up, including me, if I do something fucked up, you rest assured I didn't think about it first. Okay, I didn't think uh, before I did it. Okay, and um, that's just a human thing, I guess. You know, that's just a people thing. Okay, uh, but I try to encourage people to think. Think, think this shit out, all right? I, uh, most of my wisdom or my knowledge don't come uh, from being intellectually uh, sound. My, my, uh, most of my knowledge and wisdom come from just thinking about simple shit, you know? Um, and, uh, oh, they call it um, folk knowledge, they call that. What they call right. it? Where I live, they call that folk knowledge. Folk knowledge. Okay. Common people knowledge. It's very, uh, it's very um, 
uh, do you know what poo poo is? It's very poo pooed upon. It's looked down upon. That's what I'm saying. What's looked down upon? Uh, folk knowledge, common people knowledge. Oh. So it's not from school, it's just from common people. Right. Like life yeah. experience, you call oh, it. Oh, yeah. Thing. And, uh, you know, we call it common sense, okay? Hmm. And if people just, like, you don't have to be no, uh, you don't have to be no brain surgeon or nothing to uh, to uh, recognize shit that's just common sense. You know, like you said, folk knowledge, you know. You know, just give it a little thought, you know. And I guess thinking is not really enough. You kind of need um, some type of um, common ground which which to think from, okay? So this is what I do. I guess that kind of excels my common sense knowledge is I think from the perspective of love and appreciation, okay? So if I if my common ground uh, that um, first my, like my starting point is it, it, always either uh, stem from which love and appreciation go hand in hand but some people think it's two different things so that's why I separate them a lot but mm, mm, I think from the common ground of love truth and appreciation okay so they're all the same thing but like I said I just do that I separate them for people that don't know that this they're, they're all the same thing all right but if 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 your common ground with which you start from all right this is always your starting point okay then when you're thinking your thinking process is also laced with those um principles or a belief a system of belief then uh everything that you I should say, calculate thereafter will um, be governed by um, those things. All right. It's just like if a person is fear motivated, everything they think of and everything they come up with is something negative and dark and malicious and evil. I've met people, I'd be like, where it, when they uh think something through, uh, it, I guess they call them pessimists, uh, pessimists, yeah. skepticism, oh, pessimists. Yeah. Oh, good God, those are the most miserable people I've ever seen in my whole life. Good God, am I might have to I'll, I'll run from them, Paul. I'll run <laughs> real, real fast. Those people are the most sick, unhealthy, both mentally and naturally i noticed that a lot of excuse me i didn't get my breakfast but um i noticed that a lot of pessimists and skeptic skeptic people they are the most miserable people to be around good god almighty um i'm like oh no you got to go if they're in my environment i'm like you got to go okay no you're not welcome. I'm mm -hmm. that moment that right now. I will give them plenty of opportunity mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, I'll be like, well, why don't you do this? Well, why don't you do that? Well, um, have you ever thought about this? And you can get nothing. No, they got an answer, a negative answer to every fucking thing. Them, them, uh, the glasses, uh, half empty people you you uh you can never get them to see that the glass is half full no kind of way all right so i'm like well how about your whole glass be empty and you go get the fuck up out of here you know you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna even give you a, a half full glass we gonna empty your shit <laughs> and give you exactly what you need because it's some people that take pleasure in pain that is their pleasure. You can't, don't take that away from them. It's unfair to do so. They enjoy it. 
They like getting attention and so forth. I had to get on Nadia the other day. Um, she's gonna write on a post that if she doesn't get her medication and, and have somewhere to uh, refrigerate her medication, she's gonna die and she's worried about dying and every day. I said, Nadia, Nadia. I said, really, Nadia, you gonna, you dying now? I said, you need to stop that. I said, anytime you uh, say something to the point of exaggeration like that, it, it is not true. It's a lie. You are no longer a just uh, fabricate. Now you lie. Okay, you are not dying. Stop it. Stop that bullshit. I know you want people to feel sorry for you so you can gather up your money to get your surgery to be a woman or whatever like that, but you're going too far with that shit. Just stop it. You're going too far, baby. I love me some Nadia. But I don't care who it is. I don't like when people manipulate people into giving them money. If somebody give you money because they are sensitive to your need, let that be the reason, okay? But don't be tricking people, telling people you dying and all that kind of shit. Stop that motherfucker shit. Walk around with a, a month old hospital band. You might have went in there for a, a, in a hospital for a damn, uh, what do you call that, uh, paper cut. And uh, you got the damn hospital band on. I'm trying to make you feel sorry. Take that damn shit off. I take them down hospital. I don't want that shit on my arm. That ain't no fashion statement, bitch. Take that shit off. Sometimes I make people feel sorry for when I can tell you, I, just like she using that, that tactic to manipulate people into uh, giving her money, Nadia is very um, intelligent and wise, um, and not wise, but uh, very intelligent, uh, intellectually um, mm, mm, blessed, all right? She can make money with that, like her her uh, Kapura knowledge. Okay, she don't have to do so. that. I hope she can. Yeah, I mean that would get her life on on on, on the roads if she could use her knowledge to get to get that. Yeah, she's very smart. Yeah, yeah, very smart. But don't use that smarts to trick people. That's wrong. Hmm. Don't do that. Because it's going to come back on you. It's going to come back on you. As soon as she get that, she might get that money from people, making people feel sorry for her to get her surgery. All right. And she telling people they're giving towards her medicine and stuff, and she's saving up that money to get her surgery to be a woman. You know what can happen? She can save up all that money to get that surgery and they botch her surgery and then she really be dying. Okay? So trust me, that shit come back on you. Okay. Possibility, yeah. If the surgery doesn't go well, that's but I think she's willing to take that risk. That's not the point. My point is the very thing you tricking people to get that money from can be the death for you. When you saying you dying to get it and, and to get the money, that very uh -huh. thing, that very thing can actually kill you for real. Well, I, I feel genuinely sorry for Nadia. I, I hope she gets better. Get better from what? Drinking? Her drinking problem? Well, her gender dysphoria, um, that's very taxing. Oh, don't tell me she even got you too. But anyway, let's get back on topic because um, I don't want to get it. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, that's, that's fine, uh, Candy. I'm not, I'm not very, uh, I don't really fight over it. If, if you don't, if we don't agree, it's fine. It's, it's no problem. No, I just don't want to, what I'm saying, I, it's not that we, you fighting or nothing. Um, I just don't want to, if you believe that she's really. But from my, from what I've seen, it's I can only tell you from what I've personally witnessed. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's how I'm judging it, not from just blind, blind, blindly. I'm just telling you what I've seen from Nadia. 
have been around her for a while. I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. I'm just saying what I what I have seen and what I feel. Okay. Um. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm just so. I mean, I don't know whether I should uh, let the cat out the bag. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. It's no problem. I don't mind. That's what I'm kind of warring with. I don't know if I should let the cat go out. Ahead. Go, go ahead, Candy. I'm always interested in hearing your opinion. <laughs> Maybe you'll change my mind, you know. I don't know. Um, um, they'll pay attention, okay? They'll pay attention. Things ain't always, if you apply this principle, and then it's not the same as skepticism, but always approach things especially when people are making appeal to your emotions and you feeling sorry for a person please um kind of switch on your mm, a little skepticism all right um, and the way i approach it is i know that things aren't the way they seem Okay, things ain't always the way they seem. Okay, and uh, so what I do is I look at what's be being presented to me, and then what I do is I take take a peek behind the scenes. All right, you got that sixth sense. Yeah, but uh, if you pay attention long enough, people will expose themselves. But pay attention. All right, yeah. Now that's that sounds yeah. That's yeah. That's very good advice. You know why a lot of people that know me personally respect me? Because I'm consistent. They've been looking. They've been looking for a fault. They've been looking. <laughs> Trust me, they've been looking. But they couldn't find it. Because even when I'm wrong, I admit that too. I expose my own shit so it's not that uh, somebody um, called me out and then um, I had no other choice but to admit, okay, this is right. It's, I mean, this is, I was wrong, whatever like that. I expose my own self. I, I tell people all the time, one time somebody had uh, tried to expose me. They didn't know I had told that on myself already. And I told them, I said, baby, if you want to find out, you want to uh, wanna know, uh, I, some more exclusive faults of mine. Just ask me. I know all my faults. I can I can give you a list. All right. <laughs> if you want to know my faults, okay, I can give you a list. I know better than I know better than anybody what my faults are. Okay. Um, and see that 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 right there it cancels out all the bullshit. Okay, it cancels out all the bullshit. Um, and so anyway, let's. Getting back to that issue, we'll uh, leave that at that and um, the pay attention, baby. You pay attention uh, because I notice a lot of people uh, talk about uh, when they talk about Nadia, they say uh, Nadia is drinking Mountain Dew. That is not no damn Mountain Dew. Y'all, she got a drinking problem. That's why she talked that way. No, that's just not the way she talks. She has a drinking problem. Pay attention, shit. Pay goddamn. Sometimes she be turning up the bottle right in front of y'all face. I mean, like, really? Y'all don't see this shit? Come on now. Let's get a grip. Let's get a grip. Let's get a grip. Having a drinking problem Going to the she, she went to um to the hospital for detoxification. Come back and tell y'all anything. <clears throat> She'll come back and say, um, 
I went to the hospital for exophoria, circumstatum, uh, uh, dysphagia. And all that means was she was drunk as hell and she drank too much and it uh, attacked her, uh, her um, uh, um, immune system, all right? Y'all thinking, oh my God, she fucked up. <laughs> Shit, all that mean was she was fucked up, all right. If you were fucked up, all right. Um, she drank a little too much. That's all, she drank a little too much. Gotta put that ball down a little bit. Now they put that ball down. Baby, can't they love you, but they put that ball down, all right. Mm. Help, Lord. Mm. It gonna get real, real in a few minutes, okay? It gonna get real rocky. Uh, I live up in the mountains, make it rocky over here. All right. What do you mean? Uh, is uh, this a, a storm? Is a storm coming? Um, uh, something like that, baby. Um, when I say go get rocky, you know, uh, yeah, you in that boat, okay? Storm come, it gonna rock the boat, okay? So. Uh, since I have to, it, it, it's my mission, all right, to rock real, okay, I'm not going to be able to help people cover up their bullshit, okay, I'm not going to help, I'm not going to, I can't help with that, okay, I know the truth, okay, so I'm not going to be able to help with that. Now, I could I could have just keep that a secret and I really wish we wasn't on air, but it everything I know open is nothing left to hot, all right. But uh I wish I would have been able to tell you that in confidence. But maybe it's somebody else out there watching or that gonna watch this video that they was deceived too. And I just don't take it lightly when people wanna if you know, I, don't get me wrong. Okay, it's a um, play writer. His name is Tyler Perry. Are you familiar with the, him? Um, I'm not. I'm not. No. All right. Okay. Anyway, is he famous? Very, person famous. Yes, very famous. He a billionaire. Uh, what anyway, does he? Uh, what, does, what does he write? Maybe. Maybe then I can know who he is. Um, it's more of an ethnic type of uh, writing that he does. Um, he does little plays uh, before he came became real famous and became a billionaire and wrote, started writing movies. He did plays uh, with this fat lady uh, where he dressed up as a fat lady, an old school, um, what do you call that, kind of matriarch. Uh, and the, he, he would pretend to be like a grandmother, which they call her Madea, because in a black folk neighborhood, we call our grandmothers my dear, all right. And uh, Mimo, we call them Mimos and my dears. That is a term that, uh, that's not their name or their nickname. That's what we call our grandma, all right, grandmothers. And so he uh, had this character, my dear, in the, in the plays. And what she would do is, um, in the course of comedy, yes, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, huh? You got it, Paul. And uh, in the course of comedy, uh, she would uh, extend uh, awesome wisdom, okay, with 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 humor. So, um, Madea, in one of the episodes, she had um, she had uh, this uh, this lady. Uh, or one of her granddaughters had married this dude. And the dude uh, was uh, very well off and everything like that, but he mistreated her. And he also had uh, cheated on her uh, with her sister. Her sister was jealous of her, all right? That she had, that she felt like, the sister that felt like she was, um, more prettier, had a nicer shape, and all this kind of stuff. She felt that she should have got the billionaire. Okay, so the sister went behind her back, 
and stole a man. Okay, from him. So he this is the. This reminds me of the Greek play Medea. Uh, this is yeah. I think this is the same play. Oh, uh, but anyway, uh, he uh, anyway he went and got with the sister and married the sister. All right, he divorced her and married the sister. Anyway, that's not the moral of the story. Okay, so that left the la lady uh, single. Okay, so. She was, of course, bitter and, you know, and hurt and so forth. And uh, uh, here come this guy. Uh, I don't know where in the hell this guy comes from out the blue in the story. But anyway, uh, he uh, got out of jail. He had committed a crime and the, and the guy had got out of jail. But while he was in jail, he had found a God, all right? He got saved. Okay, and um, so when he did get out of jail, he had made a vow to himself and God that he would live right and do the right thing. Okay, so uh, he was working for Madea and doing little odd jobs around the house, her house, and you know for a little spell change, you know. So he 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 wasn't making a lot of money, but he was at least uh, getting an honest, not selling drugs. He was doing a, you know some honest make his money so uh he uh you no know, was attracted to the woman so he approached her respectfully and everything and uh and, and tried to get with her and stuff and she would her up at himself as he said uh i don't want no man at the penitentiary and yeah, you men, y'all always find God when you go to jail. You no know, type of attitude she had. Which a lot of people do have that attitude with people when they get out of jail and they find God. And people really do find God in jail because that's the place where their mind is open, okay, to hear the truth. Okay, because they ain't got nowhere else to go. Okay. That's, that's when they're most humble. Uh, right. When they're in jail. When they're stripped of all their stuff and they're more humble. Right, and then they can be more susceptible to hear the, 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 the Lord. Yes, as, as, as you say. Yes, and 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 when they get out, of many times these people do want to do the right thing, but it's because of people like her that will put them down and put them down and put them down, and they'll say, "Well, it's no use. I did try to do the right thing." But I, even for that, I didn't e even get no respect for that. You know what I mean? Uh, so it wasn't that they weren't genuine. They just didn't get the support or they didn't have a good enough support system. This is why I, that's a whole nother story because I, I used to do prison ministry as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to the story. She put him down and so forth. Okay, so Medea being the old wisdom you know, having the old wisdom, she um, she said, yeah, girl, when she uh, talked to her um, granddaughter, she said, yeah, girl, you don't want no inmate. Who want an inmate? You know, and stuff like that. Girl, I'm saying, I don't blame you. And she used reverse psychology on her. Okay. So what she did was uh, she uh, turned to Oh, when she would uh, speak negative about the dude, Madea would agree with her. All right. And uh, she didn't turn her against her. Because usually people like that that make fucked up decisions, whatever you tell them, if she, if Madea was to just outright have said, Girl, can't you see this man is is is, is sold out for God? He's trying to do the right thing. Because she, the other, the lady was like, he cutting yards. What can he do for me? He ain't got nobody to take care of himself. What can he do for me? You know, uh, stupid ass shit. That's pretty um, smart, actually. <laughs> uh huh? I said that's pretty smart. Uh, how she used uh, the reverse psychology. <laughs> yes. So um, she said, "Girl, you don't want him." Uh, yeah, girl, I wouldn't want nothing. What can he do for you, <laughs> girl? I, I can't. So she knew that if she told her that not to go with the man, that she would go with him, okay? 
So that's what she was doing. And uh, so she did that, and they wound up the together. Okay. So when it was all over with, she said, she went to my dad, and she said, I know you're not going to believe this, thing, but uh, me and such stuff, we getting married. He proposed to me. She said, oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. And, and, then, and the granddaughter said, I thought you were going to disapprove of him. She said, no, girl, I'll trick you. She said, I know if I told you to go ahead and be with that man, you weren't going to do it. And so if a person is deceptive, see, this is why I tell people right and wrong is only, um, how do you say, subjective? Um, what's moral or what's good is only uh, subjective, all right? It depends on the person. When, when you say subjective, it depends on the person. Objective is when it's not dependent on anyone. Okay. Yeah, it's subjective. So, uh, in that regard, her being deceptive as to what her real opinion about the situation was, was the right thing to do. Because of, of the, all the elements that was surrounding that, and she knew that because of the way the mind thinks, the way people mind think, um, many times if you just outright tell them to do right, they won't do it. Uh, and, and they won't um, be receptive of that. So um, she uh, used that wisdom of knowing that um, to push her towards the right thing. So um, in that regard, if you, in other words, if you trick somebody into doing something good, it's a good thing. <laughs> but if you trick somebody into doing something that's selfish, selfishly motivated and it's all about you or trick them into doing something wrong and they think they're doing right, then no, no, that's a no not. That's a, <laughs> as we say in the hood, a no not. You know, uh, that's a double negative uh, in that regard because, uh, no, uh, you, you know, uh, if somebody rob you, all right, if somebody rob you uh, and strong on rob you, that means grab something, take it from you, uh, it's a crime, okay? But people don't realize that uh, there is a, also a crime and against the law, and not even need to know this because somebody might take uh, uh, her about her, okay? Depending on who she getting money from, they might come after her for that, okay? Because uh, uh, there's a such thing as uh, theft by conversation or theft by deception. Okay? That is against the law. I don't know about where you at in your country or whatever like that. But that's by conversation. Uh, they are harder to prove. Uh, but she's got uh, too much evidence against her online. Okay? Online. So, uh, and it's out there for the whole world to see. If, they, if a person was to, like I told you, just pay attention. Okay, the evidence is right there in front of your face. Right, you're saying if 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 she's if she's indeed fraudulent, all the evidence is here that can be used against uh, against her. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's why you got to be careful what you say here online, because even if you just even if you had like a bad moment and you said something you didn't mean. People can use that against you. Like you say, I'm going to kill you, but you don't really mean it. And then they use that against you. Right. Um, yes. Somebody would have to... Uh, yeah, you can because uh, um, that's called a terroristic threat, okay? Uh, you can't threaten bodily harm, okay, to anyone. 
whether it's an extent of killing and or um, say um, anything, uh, I'm gonna beat you down or anything like that. Uh, that is <clears throat> that is called terroristic threat, all right, and it's against the law, okay. And and that's why when Mark uh, E, not no, that wasn't Mark. It was David. David uh, E that has uh, tried to lie on me and said that I had um, threatened to harm um, JD daughter. I, I said I am so glad that I had video footage that could prove my innocence. Right, right. Because that was what I said. All right. I talk bad, all right, uh, and everything like that. And I don't, I don't know if he was just looking for something bad, and he, uh, mis, he did really just uh, misunderstood what I said, because that's a possibility. Uh, because when people looking for bad, that's what they're gonna find. Um, uh, it, but he, I told him, I said, go back on the video and you tell me where I threatened the little girl. <laughs> And um, so he must have went back on because he said I threatened to slap her. I said, first of all, how could I slap her when we online? That ain't even physically capable. I mean, no, I'm not even capable of doing that. Uh, why would I threaten to do something I, I don't even have the ability to do? Secondly, uh, I have no clue where she is. So even if I was saying futuristically, I'm gonna find where, I mean, I'm gonna come to where you at and I'm gonna slap you. I don't know where to go. All right. <laughs> if I was that ridiculous to, to, to pursue that, where would I go <laughs> to slap her? Uh, you know, it, it just didn't add up. No, it, I could pick, if I was a lawyer and he came with that kind of thing, I could pick his shit all apart. It would just be fucked up and it would be a waste of court time. But, you know, I could fight that case. You could, um, but I am thankful in that regard. Yes, a person could take what you saying online and uh use it against you all right but at the same time the awesome thing about it is that goes both ways see don't you know in a court of law the same evidence that the uh, um, prosecutor use uh the defendant has the right to examine that evidence as well because they can use it in a defense hmm. okay so uh, that's what happened with the uh, O.J. Simpson case, all right. Uh, with O.J. Simpson, um, what's his name? Uh, good God Almighty. What was his lawyer name? Um, O.J. Jr. I don't know. No, O.J. <laughs> Simpson's lawyer, Johnny Cochran, all right. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't even know if I was born when this when this case went down. <laughs> oh yeah, you only twenty something. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. When was this case again? Was it in the eighties, nineties? When was no, it? No, this wasn't that old. No, it ain't been that old. But you mm -hmm. probably was young though, and and then it was a American thing. It, it's more, uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, but uh, O.J. Simpson is a very famous uh, athlete. All right. He was famous because he was good at all sports. He was just a bad motherfucker. All right. So anyway, he got off on the wrong foot and stuff like that. And he uh, supposedly, allegedly, had killed his wife. All right. It was basically a deal gone wrong. They framed, they framed him. And, but the, the glove that they was trying to frame him with and said, he used this and him glove. Um, when he uh, was killing his wife, where they fucked up was they didn't think the shit through. Okay, remember I was talking about thinking stuff through. They didn't think stuff, think it through because they used a glove. A glove. He a big man. He a big man. And the people that were framing, they got a little bitty hands. Okay, comparatively, you know, they a man, but men glove. But he was so such a big man he would have to have uh abnormal size glove you know what i mean uh in big humongous glove you know and um so but they use an average size man's glove okay to frame him with 
and say, this is the glove that he used to kick his wife. All right. But the problem was, so um, Johnny Conklin said, oh, really? So mind you, he have the same right to use the same evidence they using against his client. He can examine that evidence as well in his client's defense. So he examined the glove and found out. He said, put that glove down on. So he went to go put the glove on. He said, he kept, Johnny, I mean, uh, OJ kept telling him, I, them ain't my glove. Them ain't my glove. He he didn't know as a, um, he does, um, he just um, trying to help his lawyer get um, clear, clear on what's going on that he being framed. Okay. But he said, them not my gloves. All right. Them not my gloves. So Johnny Conklin said, okay, if these not your gloves, how can we prove that these not your gloves? Put try them gloves on. Like try to the they don't even fit on their fingers because he got big ass hands. He's a big man, you know. Uh very stocky man, all right. He's a football player. And so the glove that was the people that actually killed the man, I mean killed his wife, was an adversized man, all right. So yes, they hand could fit in that glove. But OJ Simpson hand could fit in that, could fit in that glove. So OJ, I mean OJ Simpson lawyer Johnny Conklin won that case based on one fact and one fact alone that that voided out every blood spatter, uh, 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 forensics, and every damn thing else. They tried to uh, they had altered. You know they can alter forensics. People don't know that. People don't know that. They so they just so uh, naive. But uh, they had altered, altered the forensic evidence, all right. But they couldn't alter that glove. They had already submitted them gloves in uh, in middle of the evidence, all right, against him. So all his lawyer did was use the same evidence they submitted against him, against him. You say, well, if he these is the glove, you, you do you agree that these is the glove? Yes, these is good. Okay, by by your own testimony. I prove him innocent because if the glove don't fit, he must have fit. Yeah. Damn, that's sick burn. Huh? That's a sick burn. What do that mean? It means he got he got schooled. Yeah. Yeah. So the very thing. See that uh, David was trying to use against me. I got evidence against him. See, uh, see, uh, he say, "Oh, candidates are uh, uh, a hard person, man. Yeah, look at how she treated the kid up uh, up up in this uh, video and threatened to slap that kid." And uh, I said, "Well, well, baby, I tell you what, I got it's my video." So I got the evidence and he can't erase it. I want you to find on that video. Well, Candy said she's gonna slap. First of all, I wasn't even that mad to wanna slap the baby. Uh, I love children. I don't like unruly children or disrespectful children. I, I dislike that kind of behavior, but I love me some children. And, uh, and uh, mm, that same, video that you claim that in there they say uh i said that i was gonna slap the baby i want you to look on that video huh look it over real good because i want you to know this defamation of character all right yeah i could sue him for that yeah yeah you can that defamation see people do things they don't think about it uh, a lot of people don't know uh where where the line where they crossing the line or uh, uh, breaking the law, okay? Yeah. I'm still learning and I really, uh, it's very important for me to learn uh, what the law is and what the, what the perimeters are and stuff like that. So I'm always constantly schooling myself, okay? Uh, because I, not that I wanted to go around suing people, 
but um uh, i want to know if somebody like that like he did that will uh trying to defame my character uh at because i work hard uh on my character okay and um the way i present myself i carry myself uh like uh you know respectable 24 hours a day seven days a week okay i don't just be a nice person when i walk out my door all right so if somebody uh is uh doing stuff like he did uh david to uh deface my character i got a problem with that oh yeah i got a problem with that mm. i ain't gonna uh attack right off but i will let a motherfucker know ain't but so much i'm gonna tolerate okay now we'll take action if they go using my stuff uh using my material in in, in, in um like they do g-man they'll take his videos and say all kind of derogatory stuff stuff against him that's not true uh he just don't know he can be a very wealthy man right now that sue him all every last one of them for a little spell chain yeah you can he can get him a whole bunch of chain. He just sue every last one of them that defame his character. But then see, um, the thing where that would be kind of a problem is that he got videos where he borderline defamation on other people, you know. So I don't know what he can do about that, you know. He might have he, he evens might, out. Huh? Evens out. It evens out. He gets money from others and then he gives that money to the people he defamed. So everyone <laughs> And the money just goes back and forth so everyone has the same amount they had <laughs> oh shit <laughs> this is why i had this hangout uh 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 paul because uh. Th this is the very reason why i said the christians and the atheists are the same in many a lot ways. of ways, yeah. In a lot, a lot of, ways, of yeah. ways, you know, because like you said, and I even think I didn't even think about it, but that's why I'm so gentle. <laughs> that goes right yeah. back to the topic of this of this, of this broadcast. It, uh, Christians and atheists is the same. Like if they was to uh sue each other, you like you said, the money would be just swapping hands. <laughs> I think the lawyer would just get rich. That's that's <laughs> the only person who would get rich. <laughs> <laughs> they all be paying each other, you know. <laughs> and shit. <laughs> and so, um, and shit. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, <laughs> but I let them know. I, I, I told I, um, when I seen a video where they was kind of very defaming of uh uh g-man i uh, let i put on that post i say this y'all need to be shame y'all self y'all need to quit y'all shit you know it was funny though it was hilarious now if a person has the understanding okay like i can laugh at myself if somebody uh make a up uh, like on facebook uh, this person had made a, a horse, all right, and uh, he had a picture of a horse, and um, they put a white wig up on the horse, all right, and uh, they made a, a gift file, like a, 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 a gift where the hell was blowing in the wind and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were making fun of me. All right, like a black lady with blonde hair, or whatever, like that. And oh, I died laughing. I died. Laughing. I could take a joke, you know, and it it was hilarious, you know. Shit, yeah, it was funny. Uh, I don't care nothing about that, you know. Make as video of them as you can make. Shit, uh, I don't. It, it was funny. Shit, you know. I could take a joke, you know. You can't be such a tight ass, you know, that you, uh, you know, can't nobody uh, say nothing bad about you where you uh, get all, get your drawers all in a bunch, you know, and want to sue everybody and stuff like that, you know. 
Uh, that's not what I'm saying. But if a person attacked my character, no, nah, I got a problem with that. No. Yeah, that's not protected under freedom of speech. Right. Right. Hmm. Yeah. And even it, it, uh, um, uh, people have uh, one other guy, he took my picture, my personal picture, and um, he uh, did made a meme out of it and said some derogatory stuff. Okay, um, I didn't care about that. That was, you know, it wasn't funny, it wasn't humorous or anything like that. Um, but I don't give a shit. Um, when we was in uh, school um, years ago, like we were talking about the common sense. Years ago, shit, we learned sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Okay. He wasn't defaming my character. He was just giving his opinion about me, you know. And uh, what, 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 what? Of course, his 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 picture didn't go too far because when um, what he did was he did a Photoshop of my face and he made me look kind of monstrous or whatever like that. But then when yeah. people said, um. When people said, well, who is this you talking about or whatever? Ah, ha, 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 that's funny. Who is this you're supposed to be talking about? Yeah, he said, this bitch named Candy, this bitch with this blonde hair, she thinks she all of that and all this kind of stuff. And he was just um, jealous or hate, being hateful or whatever. That's so, nasty. Yeah, he was being nasty. So, But when he would come to my page, this was so funny. His friends were trying to holler at me. <laughs> Like, well, who is supposed to be ugly? This bitch is crazy. <laughs> and so it made him look like a fool. So it was just so funny. It was so funny because it turned on him because his his own friend, because I would look at the friend request and um or either when they inbox me trying to holler at me on the call, you know, trying to you know flirt with me. I look at any face, you have one mutual friend, and it was him. I say, oh, so his friend, he thought he was making fun of me. Now his friend's all up in my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. It switched on him. <laughs> yeah, you call yourself trying to, uh, you say I was ugly. And then saying I looked at like a, uh, what was that? Uh, okay, you remember the uh, gremlins? Mm, yes, yes. Okay, the gremlin, uh, when they were the, uh, I forgot what they called them, the Ewoks or whatever like that, when they were um, the cute little animal or whatever, yeah, yeah. before they get wet, you don't want to get them wet or whatever, and that's when they turn into the gremlin. And uh, so uh, he was trying to say that I looked at like the gremlins when they turn ugly, you know. Like that. So he used Photoshop, he stretched out my face and stuff like that and tried to make me look real ugly and everything like that. Now, shit, if he wanted to really uh, see me looking ugly, you got to take a picture of me when I wake up in the morning. I damn near scare myself. Uh, it, but, you know, uh, shit, I don't have no problem with no, uh, nobody uh, if they consider me not uh, not uh, pretty or whatever like that because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. Mm. But he sure enough made himself look like a damn fool for them guys, boss, they started inboxing me friend requests like crazy when he sent out that picture. I died laughing. I said, that's that, I, I sent him a message, I tagged him in. I said, that didn't work out too well, did it? <laughs> He was like, you started with me. You started with me. I thought he thought with you. All I did was make a comment on your post that you didn't like my comment because I didn't agree with you. And then you just went into attack mode from there. You know, not why it happened. But this is how uh, the Christian and the atheist do one another. All right. One will make a comment. All right. The other one disagree with the comment and they attack. 
you know you don't have to attack every time somebody make a, a comment that you don't agree with right they post i have all kind of atheists that's in my circles and i'm friends with them okay they post all the god uh hating stuff that they want to it don't make me no never mind if they post too much of it and it it don't get on my nerve because I, um, oh, I don't want to see them saying bad things about God. I might just, it might get on my nerve sometimes because they get carried away and they post too many posts. It's my problem if they do too, too much posting. And that's for anybody, even if you're posting something good. I've uncircled people for posting too many positive uh, memes. Like, you're doing the most to stop it. It's too much. I think when people get offended, when people offend their gods, I think that's really a result of a, a fragile ego more than, than actually being upset over the god being upset. It's really the person has a very fragile ego. Yes. Yes, you keep that nail right on the head, Pump. Hey, who that? We got somebody in the room. Hey. Green is in the house. What's up, Green Soul? Green? Is he speaking? I'm not sure. Green? Are you there, hon? Maybe he don't want to speak. All right. You're welcome to just stay in if you don't want to talk. Maybe a little shy. All right. Maybe a little shy. <laughs> mm. We ain't going to bother you if you're a little shy. Okay. You're welcome. I'm just saying hi, people. All right. I'm sorry. Um, I'm having a bit of a lag. I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's not that. Can I couldn't speak because I have a lag going on. The connection is not that great. Oh. But well, thank you for inviting me. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to contribute to the conversation, or are you just listening? No, just listening. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Palm was just saying that. Um, what was you saying, Palm, about? Uh, well, it was basically about people uh, who are offended about when when you offend their gods and when they get very upset. I think I think it's very it's just a result of a fragile ego they have. It's really themselves um, that they are upset about, not not that the that the god is is being made fun of. Yeah, because um, like they have this very weak, weak God that can't really do anything. <laughs> yeah, um, and this yeah. is why I get so upset with the Christians that supposed to be associated with the same God that I serve. All right, uh, because he tells us that we don't need to defend him because. You know, basically, he the shit already. <laughs> he the shit, you know. And um, when I mean by he the shit, that um, shit, he the top dog, you know. And um, so he don't need no defense. Let me tell you something about wealthy people, okay? As it, correl as it, uh, the cor it has the same correlated understanding, all right? A person that has wealth and status, they don't have to explain a motherfucking thing to you. Okay? Uh, they don't have to... Uh, if, if, if you are... Um, let's say, if you have an opinion about something, they don't... They don't give a damn about your opinion, you know? Because 
Your opinion doesn't affect their wealth or or status. <laughs> you understand? Um, when it comes to their time, they ain't gonna let you waste their motherfucking time. Either you're gonna be on time if they are gracious enough to to uh, 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 allow you to take up their time, you better be on time. They can be late, but you better not be, okay? Because if you late and you waste the name of the fucking time, guess what? They ain't going to let you do that. They going to go on about their business and, and leave instructions that they don't want to have nothing. They don't want to hear nothing you got to say. And they don't want to be watched with you no more from that point on. Okay, and they can do that you know? because people with wealth and power are not susceptible to uh, have to deal with bullshit. This is why you see people of wealth and power and status, they don't socialize with many common people. Hey, Safi Saf, and um, they don't really associate with common people because common people don't understand this. Uh, concept that it, when you have wealth and power, you don't have to deal with the kind of foolishness you do on a certain level. And it's not to put down people that are less fortunate, but it's a whole totally different world. You got to understand that now. Whole totally different. It, it's just like uh, if if a person with uh, wealth and power, I'm using those words simultaneously because. Some people have wealth but don't have power, okay? But a person that has wealth and power, um, uh, they're on a whole other totally different level of understanding, all right? And many times um, people that, um, that don't have uh, wealth and power, they can't even comprehend that kind of understanding, okay? So... Uh, it, it, you, you're in two totally different worlds, so to speak. All right. I come back over here. Um, now, I'm not up. I haven't, as far as my financial status, I haven't uh, gained uh, a substantial. Well, I don't know what y'all, I mean, some people think I'm substantially wealthy, but I mean, I'm not a billionaire. Okay, so. But still, I can relate to understanding because, you know, I'm in the company of very wealthy people and I, the whole, the conversations are totally different, okay? Conversations are totally different, you know? They, they won't be sitting up debating about whose God is, you know, um, even you, you may have atheists in the same room with Christians, all right? Um, that uh, whether God is real and is not real may not even ever be a subject or topic of conversation. Their conversation is about um, is this business deal going to work or not? <laughs> you know, it's a totally different. It's totally different. You know, uh, they don't have discussions about whether or whether or not something is affordable. They uh, have discussions about whether or not they're going to buy. It's a difference. Big difference. So uh, if I tend to be give off uh, somewhat an arrogant, uh, it may seem arrogant, but what it is is confident, all right? I understand the difference between uh, financial uh mentalities, okay, and people uh, uh, that are poverty mentality, they find value in things that have no value, like how many likes and views that you got on your page. I know billionaires right now that don't even have a Facebook page. Uh, there are uh, millionaires that uh, they may have a page or a celebrity page, but they may have 20 likes. Does that make them less a millionaire? Hell no. Only poor people care about likes and comments.
Take that for their value. Now we'll talk. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Uh, we didn't quite catch the last thing you said. Poor well, people, something. I'm sorry. Poor mentality. Oh, okay. What, what about a poor mentality? A person with a poor mentality, that doesn't mean you, how much money you got, okay? It's a mindset, okay? What's important to poor people has no value. This is why they're poor. Okay, how many likes you have on a Facebook post? Does that give make you money? Well, the whole purpose of Facebook, um, well, most people that I know that, that use Facebook, it's really about vanity. But some people try to create social work, uh, networks through Facebook, almost like a, a sense of advertisement or even social networking. It's a funny thing about money. I actually was watching a movie today. It was about a guy named Samuel Bolivar. Um, basically, he's called like the liberator of South America. But there was a there was a quote one of his professors was telling him. He said that you're so poor, all you have is money. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what you're probably getting at. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. All right. Uh, I've even, uh, when I talk to people that are millionaires, they wonder, like, um, and say, for example, their financial status, uh, they have, they're, they're worth more than me financially, you know, as far as their bank account, all right? But, uh, why I talk to them like they're beneath me. Um, and, and it's not intentional. I mean, this is what they say that I do. Uh, but I'm not talking to them like they're beneath me. I'm talking to them like their, their money means shit to me. How much money they have don't mean a motherfucking thing to me. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You cannot manipulate me with money because I don't find value in money. A poor person, uh, as far as financial status, can uh, I will value them uh, before I value somebody that's an asshole with money. Uh, so, because I don't, uh, the value that I place in people is not based upon their financial status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be so, uh, like you said, how did you put it? Uh, what was that? Say that again. No, he said that you're so poor, all you have is money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because many people uh, that I have come across that are financially uh, rich, because there's a difference between rich and wealth. Um, many people that I've come across that are rich, uh, they are very poor, very poor. Oh my God, you should see them. They are just the miserable, most miserable people um, that you can find on earth. And I see people that are poor that have, they have everything, everything in the world. They don't realize how valuable it is. You know, they have family. Um, you know, uh, they have, uh, they're not really wanting for anything and, you know, um, they are successful in that regard. Like, what more do you want from, uh, besides that? You know what I mean? Um, and they look at the rich people that are rich as in finance, but they don't know how poor these people are. These people are so miserable. I've met a lot of, uh, Guys that are major millionaires but don't have nobody to love them because all the women that approach them only want them for their money. 
Oh, I heard a similar story from uh, um, Vanilla Ice. That was Vanilla Ice. He said uh, when he was younger, he was comp constantly manipulated by people for his money. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, all he had left when he was, I think, nearly broke, all he had left was uh, the people um, who stayed, you know, it was his families and his very close friends. Those are the only people, and the rest all just vanished. Just uh, fair weather friends. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that happens all the time. I look at um, Oprah Winfrey. Even though I really look up to her, she's an awesome, awesome, uh, you know, respectable woman. Okay. Only thing I don't agree with, she's the big stickler on education. I don't agree with that in, um, in any kind of way. Uh, education don't make you money. Most um, wealthy people uh, uh, don't even have degrees, so that. That's evidence right there that puts that shit right out the door. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, other than that, uh, she's, she's an awesome woman. Uh, respectable. Um, she has a nice body, but you'll never see her exposing her body in a, uh, you know, disrespectful manner or anything like that. Uh, and um, and I, just, I just have the utmost respect for her. But... I see, wow, um, no amount of makeup uh, that they can put on her can hide that she's unhappy. Yeah, she's not happy. And I don't think it's, it may be, I don't know if it's her fault or not. Um, and it could be. Um, she might be too dominating to, uh, as far as really have a, a a loving relationship with a man. She might be a little too dominant. The um, because this is the thing with women that are leaders. I, I used to have that uh, same kind of uh, problem. Uh, I was too um controlling of too many aspects and God had to teach me and say okay I, I gave you um, you have a leadership a leadership um, type of uh, character okay but you need to know how to change your hat so to speak you know when it when you dealing in business you put on your business hat when you are uh, dealing with your husband and you have to put on your wife hat. You you no longer the boss. All right, you are uh, the wife. You're the co-partner. You no. Know? So I had to learn how to put on my different hats. All right. And um, you know, I I think uh, uh many women that are leaders, um, I think that that's their biggest struggle, uh, with um. Mm, finding a compatible mate because they don't know how to change them hats, okay? And humble themselves um, to the authority of a man. Uh, the other aspect is on the men. The men are very intimidated by uh, very uh, powerful women. Very intimidated by that. But um, Oprah... Mm, it's, it's obvious that she is not happy. And she got paid of money. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people. If you just pay attention, remember what I was telling you, Palm, earlier? I say you just, you know, people can present something to you, but you kind of got to take a peek behind the scenes, you know. Look, in other words, look past what they trying to present to you, you know, the cover. You gotta lift the mask, so to speak, and, and, and just pay attention to uh, what, what you're really seeing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah.
Have you ever seen a woman with a bad, real bad makeup job on? Uh, she got real bad skin, acne, and shit like that. She got that makeup caked up, caked on her face, but you can still see the bumps through the makeup. Yeah, with that. yeah uh, that's pretty much how uh, uh, people who uh, really, their life really fucked up. And they put that makeup on. If you just pay attention, you can see the bumps everywhere. You know, they look at it, you know, say, damn, they really fucked up, you know. Even the makeup ain't helped them, you know. And I mean that metaphorically. You know. Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? Safi's back. Hey, Safi. I'll try my best to not make yourself piss yourself laughing today. Oh, all right. No funny things coming out. I'm really tired today, but yeah, thought I'd pop in and say hi. All right. Check how things are going. So how's your uh, hangouts been going? Um, not so bad. I've got two in my YouTube channel, which have gone quite good. So yeah, pretty cool, I guess. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry, hon. I didn't uh, attend any of your hangouts because you just kicking about, okay? And Candy is a businesswoman, okay? I'm strictly business, all right? So uh, I'm not online. Even though I look like I'm just chilling with you guys, I'm taking care of business, okay? Okay. Things ain't always what they seem. Okay. You're never off your own Hangouts, though, are you? Huh? I see you using, I see you live in Hangouts all the time, and it's just like, I uh, don't know what to say. I don't have have anything to contribute. So sometimes I watch you live in YouTube, but that's about it, really. Mm-hmm. I'm mostly busy trying to eat. <laughs> I eat so much, it's unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah, I never gain weight. Mm-hmm. Mm. One of those really thin weirdos. But nothing I can do about it, to my knowledge. But good to see you again, anyway. Oh, you right. want to gain weight? Huh? I don't know, I was asking Safi, you want to gain weight? Well, I'd prefer to gain weight on my lower wrists. I can easily gain weight on the entire, like, the entirety of the rest of my body, but I can never gain weight on my lower arms. So you want to look like Popeye? Well, that's up my arms, isn't it? <laughs> I've got really thin wrists. So I just want to gain a bit of fat on there, but no matter what I eat, I try various <laughs> diets, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently it's genetic, but is it shit? My mom's fat, my dad's fat. Looks like I don't get on with my dad, but he's a pretty well, big build guy. There's a there's a secret. Um, just eat once, well, once or twice a day, like really big meals, and then go to sleep, and see how that works. All right, I'll give that a shot. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it'll change some weight. Just twice a day, and then sleep. So like really huge meals, and just go to sleep, <laughs> and you'll gain weight. If you're serious, Frank, I'll give it a shot. You're muted, Frank, if you're speaking there. No, I'm sorry. Um, you're not, are you lifting weights? No, I'm not up to weights. Um, <clears throat> I have brittle oh. bone, um, wouldn't we call it brittle bone disease? But oh, I have osteoporosis and stuff, so I can't really lift much. I've had oh, that's... MX riding because of constant fractures and broken bones. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Uh, maybe that's what's contributing not you gaining weight. Is that possible? Yeah. Because okay, sure. yeah, I, I think I think that's what it is. So forget what I just said. Well, I've done wrist exercises trying to uh, lift. Long story short, me like my uncle Rob used to be in the army, and he brought back home to England, the UK. Um, <clears throat> these massive arse 
freaking um, tank bones. I used to use them as weights. Um, oh, okay. Tendonitis just screwed me over. Um, tried as long as me wrists, um, as long as me wrists didn't hurt. Get loads, you know, and like it didn't seem to gain any any more muscle, and certainly no fat on me lower wrists. I mean, my upper arms are just sort of about average for my characteristic sort of thing, but around my wrist area, really mm -hmm. thin. Don't get it. Doctors insist that this is perfectly normal and natural, but I want it a bit different. Just for confidence, basically, I guess. Um, I think as long as your wrists are really strong, I don't think it really matters on the size, but it's really the bones of your wrist. Would that make more sense? Because, you know... <laughs> It seems like the skin is like right on the bone in my lower arms. Well, that's the same way with mine, actually. Uh, there's a lot of people like that, but they have very strong ribs. Yeah. Um, mm. I, I would I would say just do a lot of stretches. Stretches are actually really good. Well, you know? I, would, I would have to say, um, Safi, that um, I think most of your um, issues that you're dealing with is um, because you are uh, needing to at some point come to grips with uh, learning how to love yourself as you are, okay? Um, many people... Oh, sorry to interrupt, Candy, but I do actually. It's just... And it's just uncomfortable when I see how thin my wrists are. It's like my arms are freaks kind of thing, but I'm not really upset about it. I just do with a bit more confidence. That's what I mean. Well, that's what I was saying, Sophie. Yeah. Hey, say, did you see these exercises that it's like a bar and then it has a string in the bottom? You're doing this. Can you see me? Oh, like that. Try that. Yeah, I'll give that a shot. Yeah, just roll it up with a weight in the bottom, and then you just like clockwise and counterclockwise. You know, and, um, actually, it's, uh, a lot of people do it. I used to do it when I was younger, uh, when I used to play baseball, because you really need a strong wrist um, to swing the bat. <laughs> So, I knew uh, there was a meaning to the movie I was watching early on TV um, about baseball, and I was like, somebody just had a weird feeling, like somebody was about to talk about baseball. I was like, oh, well, there you go. Another strange coincidence, Frank. Yeah, uh, Carl, Young you? <laughs> this, uh, Carl Young had a phrase for that. It's called synchronicity. There's a term for that in psychology, synchronicity. When you hear something and you think about something, all of a sudden somebody talks about it, that's synchronicity. Synchronicity, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a concept of that. Uh, but yeah, um, I, were you, do you, do you play any type of sports? Well, I used to ride BMX bikes and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but with sports, no. Well, you used to ride bikes? I used to ride bikes. I write a lot of rap lyrics and stuff, so that kind of oh, hurts oh, my wrist. Oh, Can you repeat that? I don't play sports really. Oh, oh okay. But I do write a lot of rap, like music lyrics, which tends to strain my wrist because I'm constantly <laughs> moving it. <laughs> you know, it's some kind of joint problem. <laughs> <laughs> trying to write it down quick enough before I forget them, like, come on, stop it, and then I forget it, like, oh, shit, can't write it quick enough. That's just me, though. I got a really good rap in my mind, like, the lyrics, you know, I'm like, ah, I need to keep a pen and paper with, that like, in my pocket all the time. To at least make sure that I'm kind of ready. What's so funny about rap, anyway? 
<laughs> I said exercise. He's talking about rap. I just started laughing. <laughs> That is an exercise for <laughs> <laughs> it. Just, it just went in another direction. I was like, yeah, oh. this whole conversation is uh, <laughs> a bit. Uh, I don't mind when things get off topic, but um, we do want to um, keep in mind this is live, and um, I'd appreciate it if you keep in mind that um, uh, I do have a purpose here, and that's to. Uh, a, a, you know, have topics that's of interest to uh, more than just one person, you know, um, because um, we, we do have people, people you know, out, outside watching, okay? And oh, I'm sorry, sorry about that, Candy. Please carry on. Okay. No, uh, you, you all can uh, uh, carry on, but just please keep, keep that in mind. Yeah, we want to talk about uh, topics that, um, uh, what do you want to say, um, interest uh, more than one person, okay? Um, as far as uh, Safi bringing up the um, fact that um, he wants to, um, he's working on building up his uh, lower arms and stuff like that. Um, and uh, as far as people not being um, uh, satisfied with with their um, the natural way that they were born or whatever like that. Um, like I have this, um, what do you call that, spare tire, even though I have like the perfect shape seem like it annoys the fuck out of me that I have that spare tire, that extra piece of meat sticking out. And I I love the fact that, you know, um, the rest of me, God did an awesome job, but that one little spot, you know, that bothers me or whatever like that, um, uh, it, it, that's something that a lot of people can relate to, okay? That's something that a lot of people can relate to, not being satisfied and um, maybe wanting to do something about it. To hey, idol snatcher, um, wanting to change that. So you know, carry on. I just wanted to um, ask you all to kind of more generalize this subject and make it, uh, um, you know, make it where everybody can contribute to the to the conversation. Hey, Candy, I got the double chin action going on here. I see you, I see you, miss. <laughs> hey, uh, you ain't going to talk today, uh, I'll smash it. Oh, you having sound sound issues? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. What's the name? Green. Yes, ma'am. Um. Can you expound a little more on that? Um. What are you saying? Um. Sync with this, please. Think. When um, Safi was talking about, you was talking about um, bodybuilding, and he was talking about uh, baseball or something, and he was like, "That's called um, synchron. It's like synchronized thought or something." Yeah. Um, hold on, I'll be right back. I'm sorry, sorry. Hi. What? Hello. Hey. Mike, I'll text you right back. All right. Hi. Hey, hey, James, what's up? Hi, what's up, y'all? <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Um, I'll, I'll talk about oh, that. Everything one. comes out okay for you. Huh? Say again? Well, you said you're going to the bathroom. I said, I hope everything comes out okay for you. Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> My son actually ate a, um, a Lego piece this morning. He freaked out. So <laughs> we're monitoring. <laughs> I hope everything comes out okay for him as well. 
<laughs> I know, I try a piece. I've never seen a brown Lego piece before. <laughs> I think they make them in all colors now, um, uh, Safi. <coughs> then again, I've never seen a pink Lego piece, actually. Yeah, they have, because um, you can build all kinds of stuff with Legos. So they have them in all colors now. I've never seen they brown. They used to have it a limited, a limited, you know, uh, the basic color, but now they come in all colors because you can, um, they've even had contests of uh, who built the most interesting thing from Lego type of contest. So, Legos has, uh, um, they upgrade. Okay, they, uh, they, they got upgrades. <laughs> like the matrix. I really want to see what the competition winners actually did. What they built? Huh? I really want to see what the competition, like the new Lego color people have actually built with pink and brown Lego blocks. Um, well, I, for, of course, um, any type of um, girly-ish type of stuff, um, you would need to um, have pink Legos and so forth, so they got them in all colors, mm -hmm. and um, uh, like I said, people that are Legoers, I don't know what they call themselves, but there are people that really are into Legos, and uh, or, or say Lego architecture, where they build it, um, build, uh, Lego architect, architects, I think? Well, basically, Legoas. I think your original term, Candy, was the best way to put it. <laughs> Legoas. Yeah. Um, you call them that, Legoas. People that build things using Lego blocks. Yeah. And obviously, the base that you build them onto, not, mm -hmm. they're not all just simply blocks. Then you've got Lego men, women. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because they build whole cities and stuff, really. Yeah, um, like in Legoland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've never been there though. So, uh, uh, mm, out of fashion, is your name James? James, yes, ma'am. Right. Okay, I'd rather call you that. These uh, they are made up names is a little annoying. Um, I I try to deal with it, but mm, it, it, if it's not simple enough, it it kind of annoys me a little bit. So, if, if it's okay, if I call you James. It's just fine. All right, all right. So, James, uh, you uh, want to contribute to uh, the topic. The topic wasn't actually about Legos. It kind of veered off into that, you know. <laughs> and it was you, Candy, nobody else. <laughs> you know, I'll get off topic. I'll get way the fuck off topic. <laughs> um. Mm. So, you know what? I'm a little interested now. Um, don't take it as an attack or nothing like that, all right? But your title being the idol smasher, okay, on your, on your page, um, the idol smasher, okay? Yes. In my mind, you would be a person... Okay, I would think just if I don't know anything about you, which I don't know much about you really, but um, I would think that would be a person that was against religion. Okay, so um, when I see some of your posts, um, they are very um, fierce, religious. Uh, yeah. So that's that's very confusing for me because it's it's. It's it's still very religious. So um, mm. right. the God of Israel detests idols. Um, it was James the Idol Smasher, and I closed that channel thinking I could reopen it as James the Idol Smasher for my Yahoo account, and they wouldn't let me. And the only one available, I couldn't get Idol Smasher James. Somebody had that, so I just took the Idol Smasher. But um, yeah, idols are pretty detestable to God. Uh, Worshipping things of nature, you know, putting. Putting veneration to a tree 
above all trees. Um, worshiping statues. Uh, these are things that are pretty detestable, and you know, it's that's a it's a it, it is it is biblical, yes. But um, yeah, when your religions are based on idolatry, they're bound to fail. They're destructive to I think humanity. I think they're destructive to the mind to worship objects or people or even ideas. Um, not that I'm going to go around smashing your idols, but if you present one to me, I'll be happy to do a Gallagher. Sledgematic on it, <laughs> uh, yeah. That, so it, don't you yeah. kind of worship the Torah? Uh, I I worship God, and yeah, I study Torah. Absolutely, I, I really believe in I believe in it. Yeah, I, I'm 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 a God fearer, by all means. But when you ask if Christians and atheists are the same, honestly, in many 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 ways, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. The way they, the way, the way they come across. That's why they fight each other, and they need to fight. They need to have these discussions. They need to get to know each other, because obviously, um, one's deluded about themselves and the other when they go after each other on so on the levels that they do so much of the time. You know, I don't think every atheist is like this, or every a Christian is like this. I know they're not for a fact. They're not, of course. But you know, when you get the the loud ones who who want to prove the other one wrong, it's fun. Uh, to an extent, but when you take it really seriously, yeah, the missionizing and the uh, the black and white, um, rather than many colors or phases or levels of of behavior, it's it's all about belief, and you've had the wrong belief, and yeah, they're honestly they can they behave quite the same sometimes. Sometimes I I think Christians give far more charity than atheists do per capita. Per capita, I, I will say that I, that's where they differ. I think that the Christian is much much more likely to um, even if it is for the sake of avoiding eternal damnation, um, that they're but that they're more likely to um, give you the shirt off their back, right? You know, so there are differences. I see that, but, and of course, philosophical differences. Obviously, um, they both say the Jews are wrong, so <laughs> they're like in that way. <laughs> they both say the Jews are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Jews because they believe in God, and Christians because they didn't accept Jesus. So they both, you know, they both say we're wrong. <laughs> um, um, but I say that in part just, but it's true. So we kind of catch flack from both ends. Okay, so um, I don't quite know uh, what your beliefs are. Are you uh, claiming to be Jewish? No, ma'am. I'm just a God fearer, and I re and I really believe that the Torah is something very, very special. And the more I and I've been studying it for a long time, and the more I put it to use, and the more I just study it and learn it and organize my mind, I, I, it's really benefited me in a very positive way. And I think it benefits my job, which benefits other people. I think it helps me with my kids better. I, I really and so yeah, I'm I'm stuck with the juice. I'm I'm stuck with Abrahamic people very much because that's where you go to get the goods, you know. And I've been going there for ten years, and it, it really it it's it's good stuff. I do believe I'm just a God fearer, though. If you if there's a label, Noahide, of course that's the that's the or Noahite. Noahide is technically an adjective, but Noahide you might might have heard of the Noahide laws. There's a covenant in the Bible where um, God makes a covenant with Noah for all mankind, gives them uh, again. There are six law six laws, six don'ts, and one do. One of those laws, of course, is is the prohibition of idolatry. Uh, so, in other words, to to be to be godly, you can't worship created things. Right. Yeah. But I, so I'm a god fearer, and, and and I might I might have philosophical differences with Christians. Um, sometimes with Muslims, very rare. But even even with other Jews, you know, you have philosophical differences. But if you, you know, you live a good life, that's that's really what counts now, here and now. It's all about how we do things now. Mm -hmm. so I'm a god fearer. Uh, theist, sure. Not a Jew, though. I'm not a Jew. I eat pork, and I, <laughs> I do enjoy bacon. Uh, <laughs> I, I won't deny that. Um, awesome thing. Praise God. Praise God for the hogs. Bless them. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, prayer for the hogs. Uh, they give us good bacon and shit like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, proof that God loves non-Jews. <laughs> uh, Safi was asking uh, over in the chat box, is that God fearer? 
why fear? Um, because he's not understanding. See, this is um, something that I would like to uh, relay to many uh, believers, okay? Um, or um, God lovers, all right? Uh, or believers. We need to start. Um, it's okay to use our terminology for things. But when a non-believer hears the word fear, you know um, they associate something negative to that. So um, they don't know that it means that it's respect, that it means respect, okay? So he's asking God fear over in the chat box, why fear, okay? Cause, okay, so, I, so I'm just going to explain that to him. Uh, Safi, um, when he says God fearing, that means reverential fear, respect, honor. Okay, that's it. Absolutely, yeah. Fear is is, is respect. It is, yeah, definitely. Thanks for that. Okay. It's just the term that they they say. Someone who fears God is like, I, I'll keep the law, and I and uh, yeah, I fear when I break it. <laughs> You mean kind of like um, no, no, that's, that's the wrong terminology. Um, it doesn't mean to be afraid. Um, it does not mean that you have to look that word up. Uh, fear. That fear is reverence, honor, respect. Um, it's not a sense of being scared. This is not the same. It's not the same uh, relatable um, emotion. All right, uh, because. Um, when it says fear God rather than man, he's not saying be, in, be afraid of God. It means give God's word more respect or priority than you do um, that of the man. Okay, So um, that's even in the uh, believer's faith. Even, even the words that they use, they don't understand very well. So um, that's why we have such a hard time explaining to the atheists because we haven't been um, thoroughly taught uh, what, what things mean. So it makes it really difficult to relate something that you don't understand quite quite well yourself. Okay? And um, yeah, that's what uh, fear, fear, that word fear means when it is, I don't know what it means in the Torah because I don't even know what the Torah is. Um, but in the Bible, when the word fear is being used, um, not all the time, in, in some cases it means exactly what you would think it would mean. It means being afraid. But, okay, say for example, like um, when people, when the angels would uh, approach people, they, the Bible says that uh, he feared, all right, or she feared, or whatever. Um, then in that regard, yes, it meant um, they were afraid, you know, or scared. It wasn't reverence or respect. They were really scared, okay? So, um, but when it speaks in regard to God, uh, uh, um, as far as giving instructions, um, it is speaking about um, respect, honor, um, priority on a, on placing priority doesn't mean being afraid. Well said. Um, this you wrote in here in the comments, uh, James Torah equal first five books of, of, of the Hebrew Bible. Five books of Moses. Uh, yeah, Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. Is actually, oh, because so y'all you know, oh, don't believe in Jesus. Well, it's believing in Jesus is one thing. To <laughs> yeah, Hebrew, I, I must spell it. To believe, I mean, believing is one thing, but we don't pray to Jesus. We pray to God. Even Jesus said, when he, the one prayer he gave, he said, pray to our Father. Right, right, okay. So okay. that's the, so we don't pray to Jesus. Whether oh, okay. We pray or Savior, we right here then, Jane. We right here then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we see eye to eye on that one. Uh, it, it, and it, it, it annoys me um, a little bit with the Christians that Jesus this and Jesus that and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And um, first of all, that wasn't even his name, but we ain't going to get into that. <laughs> um, but 
and, and, and uh, but even like you said, even he said, "Don't worship him." He said to honor the Father, you know, to pray. He said, "I will pray to the Father." He didn't say, "Pray to me." <laughs> he said. Let us pray to the Father. Let's talk to the Father about this, you know, <laughs> and everything like that. So uh, I, I can dig them blues. Uh, that is so annoying to see the, the Jesus worshipers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be out smashing too, uh, Jane. You, I know you done seen my video. I, I get my, uh, I got one of them mirror mirrors. Uh, you got the ham that uh, Hamlet. All right, but I got me a mirror mirror. You know what a mirror mirror is? Mm -mm. Uh, you ain't never seen Thor. Yeah, uh, uh, what's that? You seen Thor? Oh, <laughs> okay, I know what you're saying now. Oh, the movie? Yes. <laughs> yes. He the hammer, and he, when he put his hammer down, uh, it's a wrap. When he put the hammer down, all right, well, uh, that hammer is called a mirror mirror. All right, it, that's the name of it. It's not called um, a hammer. They call it the uh, mirror, mirror. Yeah, mirror. yeah, I keep my mirror, mirror. It, uh, it, shit. Yeah, you right. Uh, uh, Jesus' name was uh, uh, not. It was not Jesus. Uh, the word Je uh, The it means savior. Okay, so they were saying that uh, recognize him as being a savior for the people. Uh, um, stuff like that, but that wasn't his name. His name was Samaria, all right. So, uh, which means God in us, okay. No, that's not what Jesus, Jesus does not mean anointed one. No, 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 not Jesus uh, Christ, the word Christ. Uh, yes. The word Christos. Um, yes. Anointed one. Yes, but people don't, his name is not Christ either. Nobody calls him Christ. They call him Jesus Christ, but, um. No, Safi was just asking what the origins of the name Christ is. So. Okay, y'all got a lot of chatting going on in the box. I ain't, I ain't keeping up here. Let's see. Okay, I see. What are the origins of the name Christ? Uh, some of the not softy, this is the thing that uh, causes a lot of division amongst uh, Christian believers or, uh, is that they argue over uh, what the origin is, what's most important, and stuff like that. Right. Um, so uh, it, you really can't say where something began if you wasn't actually there. So what would you have to rely upon to um, figure out where things began? You would have to rely on um, the evidence that you are presented with, okay, or any type of documentation. Problem with the Christian faith in um, gathering information to find out origins or whatever, find out what's right or wrong or belief systems or whatever like that, um, doctrine versus uh, actual uh, spiritual com commands or principles. The, the, the only way that you uh, would be able to verify that is to go to the source, which is God, okay? He knows everything. Uh, reason being is because um, Christians have endured a lot of persecution. Therefore, a lot of their actual written accounts and evidence that can prove certain things were destroyed, okay? Destroyed. So um, people are, uh, when they argue about what's right and what's wrong, they are actually doing it in ignorance um, because they are not getting the point that there is no way that you can get to the bottom of this stuff because evidence has been destroyed. It's that simple. It's that simple. <laughs> you, it, it's no way you can have a definite or emphatic um, 
uh, knowledge about that unless you ask God, which he knows everything. So uh, otherwise, um, you're just going based on what you have. Uh, can you have a case where um, somebody is proven guilty um, by reason of the fact that there was lack of evidence to prove them innocent? Absolutely you can. Okay? So um, it's easy for atheists to throw up in the air and say, um, you, your God doesn't exist by reason of lack of evidence. Okay? But what they can't do is they can't prove that God doesn't exist they, they can't submit evidence to prove that he doesn't. They can only say that a believer cannot um, present evidence to prove um, that he exists. I agree. You see, most atheists don't want to admit that. As much as they say they go by evidence, 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 they don't have no proof that God don't exist, yet they will say and post me me that he doesn't. Where's your motherfucking evidence? Y'all say y'all go by evidence. Where's your fucking evidence? Well, take that motherfucking me me down then, because you don't got no damn evidence. You know, so... I, I, I could make them look real, real bad, but I know they don't know no better, so I don't even, I just, you know, throw that out there, let that marinate, and they, they had to get back with me. I done debunked a bunch of them, poor thing. They, they, they gather and they, uh, they trying to get their stuff together now, and hopefully, uh, either they realize that uh, they lost and they done gave up the fight, or either they going to gather up some more bullshit and they'll be back. By debunking them already. Every last one of them. Every last one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I take that back. There's some out there that I haven't uh, debunked them uh, personally, but they watched my video where I was debunking somebody else that had the same uh, shaky grounds they were standing on, so they don't even want no parts of me. They don't want to be embarrassed, uh, so they don't want no part of me. You know, uh, it's not because candy's so bad, but I, I can't. We, we I'm not gonna let nobody uh, take me all around the corner like I'm a host. We gonna stay right here out in the open. So whatever we wanna uh, discuss, gonna be discussed in the open and the sight of everybody where it can be properly judged. You know, and um, see, uh, if they want to try to make my God look bad, if there's no way that that can be done, I can just chill on that. I can just, you know, sit back and, and laugh at it. Uh, but when you want to get into a debate about uh, the difference between this and that, all right, mm -hmm. I can break it down to the law of terms, but my confidence comes from God because he got, uh, uh, his wisdom reigns no matter what, and I can prove it, and I'll do it over and over again. That's why I challenge him, but I ain't got no takers. I ain't got no takers. You know, in the Bible, uh, it, it, there are many uh, mm, testaments, and this is why atheists hate that Bible, though. They hate that Bible uh, called it. There's many testaments in the Bible where people have challenged our God. We always win. <laughs> Ain't that right, James? It's hard for him to touch it. It really is. <laughs> they, they, build, they build an idol, and they say, this is what you worship, and it's all wrong. Watch me destroy it. See? <laughs> You're wrong. See what I did there? <laughs> we put the hammer down on their ass. <laughs> We put the hammer down on that ass every time, you know. Uh, so they, uh, they don't want no trouble. All right. Uh, it's kind of like Muhammad Ali. 
uh, for a long time, he couldn't even find no contender because people would say, I ain't getting in the ring with that man. Make me look like a damn fool. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, his manager had to tell him, when you have a fight, don't whoop him so bad. Like, you let him make it through the first round. God damn, people want to be entertained and shit like that, you know. Don't whoop him off up in the uh, first round. <laughs> Look, the first three seconds of a round is a TKO, you know. <laughs> You got to toy with him a little bit. And that's when Muhammad started dancing around the stage and so forth mm -hmm. <laughs> and carrying out. So he knew he was going to win anyhow. So he danced around the stage and cut up and turn flips and carry out and, you know, give the people a good show before he knock a motherfucker out. <laughs> and shit. Uh, and uh, I, get, I get a little, I need to stop my shit though, but I get a little pleasure out there. I got I get just a little bit of pleasure out that, you know. I like to uh toy with them uh idol uh, them idol worshippers. Even even the so called Christians that claim they are uh, uh, defending our God is shoot. I don't know what God they serve, but uh the God I serve, he don't need no defending. <laughs> He'll bash some of God all by himself. <laughs> He the boss of this operation, and ain't a damn thing nobody can do about it. <laughs> <He's scared. laughs> That's real talk. <laughs> yeah. That's real talk. They can piss and whine and moan all they want to, but ain't a damn thing they can do about it. Uh -huh. mm, Safi, you must be having some connection problems. You dumping in and out, B. Yeah, but I was a little curious uh, about your uh, belief, uh, Jane. I'm going to have to look into that Torah. It's, um, I believe, there's enough evidence to show that it's, it's the product of a higher intelligence than man. I really do. Um, we can't empirically show God. Fine. He's not supposed to, but that's the point. Um, you find God in all things. That's the point. Um, and, but I, I really do think that it came from... It just happens to speak of God, so it would be really difficult for me to say space aliens or a guy from the future, but there's something strange and unnatural about it, completely off the wall. It's The Hebrew language is like no other language on the planet. It's pictorial, like Chinese and Sanskrit, it's spoken phonetically, like our alphabet, but it's also numerical, and it works like the chemical language. So when you start looking at the Torah from the Hebrew, uh, which I'm just getting into learning Hebrew. I've only been able to read my Hebrew a year. Hebrew so. is a bad motherfucker, ain't it? Uh, I agree. Uh, God was showing me uh, 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 that, uh, boy, that Hebrew is a motherfucker. Uh, I, I love it, too. I'm very intrigued by it. Uh, uh, I studied the Greek and Hebrew, uh, but that Hebrew got something spiritual out of it. It uh, could have got a mighty one word, because uh, their words are expressions, not words. Right. So uh, therefore, one word can mean the very the express opposite of. Uh, mm, like uh, um, like the zvi and a zev and a zev. Um, there are no there are no vowels on a Torah scroll, so that's spelled with the same Hebrew letters. The deer, the zavi, and the wolf. The zvi, I think that's right. But in Hebrew, it's a uh, it's a uh, um uh, a z and a vav. It's the same two Hebrew letters. That would mean both predator and prey. You yes, know, it's like the, the opposite. Is is. Well, that's what God is, the perfect balance. Yes. Their words are um, the opposite of each other. It can mean either or. Uh, you can use like Abba. You know how people say Abba, Father? Mm -hmm. The word Abba, I found, does it mean Father? It can be referring to a father figure in adoration. Or you can use the word and say Abba. That Abba. And mean that an uh, enemy, 
<laughs> so it can mean friend or foe. You know, I said, wow. Uh, <laughs> That is, you are so right. That uh, I don't know nothing about the Torah, but baby, that Hebrew language is something else. I, I, boy, I was spiritually drawn to that language too. I really was. I tell you, uh, not was, I am. Uh, that language there is so awesome in itself. It is amazing uh, language. I speak a little myself. Uh, but now, I, take, now take that and put it into numerical code perspective and imagine what can be blossomed from the Torah itself. All the the layers and the, the you know it just every word every phrase blossoms into a thousand teachings. Mm-hmm. 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 So it's, I can uh, imagine. There's a check out my my YouTube page. There's some stuff on the Hebrew language. There's some really neat videos, um, lectures. It, it, they're they're by rabbis, but he's gonna he's gonna. The, I got one that's 45 minutes of DNA of creation, and another one's a four. Um, Four hours or four and a half hours of, of four different lectures of just breaking down the Hebrew language. They barely scratch the surface, and it makes you leaves you kind of numb. You know, when you watch, it, you're like, "Whoa, <laughs> there's something not quite right about this." Okay, this isn't natural. It's difficult for me to believe, as atheists would say, a bunch of sheep herding Bronze Age savages wrote a fairy tale. It's far more than that. It's not even a fairy tale. It's and they weren't savages, and you know, but still. That's that's how it's referred to, and there's more. There's far more to it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's it's like watermelon or ice cream. It's good stuff, you know. It, what you love it anyway. Well, if it's broken down, see, this is where I get uh, lost with many of the intellectual uh, soundness of uh, certain uh, information as it's presented. Uh, the problem where I get lost is that if 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 something is um, I find awesomeness in not that I can't understand something profound, but I find uh, something to be awesome in its simplicity. That it looked as if it was so sophisticated that you couldn't understand it, but it's as simple as ABC. You know, mm -hmm. um, and that is the awesomeness that I find in God. That those things He said He took the foolish things and to confound the wise, or that uh, He hid the wisdom of uh, wealth in the poor. You know, um, He said the wealth of, of um, the wicked is uh, stored up for the just. All right, and um, I don't know how to explain that uh, right offhand, but my point is that all right, um, I, I I like simplicity. I I found that God is is in His awesomeness uh, is able to be extravagantly awesome and simple all at the same time. Yeah. I like the same thing. Yeah. Uh, that's what makes him so amazing. That he can be the extreme uh a sense of intellect, you know, uh as far as um knowledge and wisdom. He can be the ultimate and the least all at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's what that's what intrigues me about him. That uh, he can reach the highs, the highs, and and dip down here low in the valley where I'm at too. Uh, the old folks used to sing uh, in the Pentecostal church where I come up. Say, uh, it's a song that they sung um, during the um, what is that Easter uh, holiday. Well, they sung it all year round, but it just, uh, they made sure that on, on the Easter holiday that's supposed to be about the resurrection, uh, not about no bunny laying eggs. I don't know how in the hell that happened, but anyway, uh, it was supposed to be about the resurrection of, of, of Jesus or whatever like that. And, um, and uh, so they used to sing this song about the blood of Jesus and how powerful it is, you know. 
uh, their bloodline, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, they would think about the blood and how powerful um, that um, sacrifice was for us. And um, the song say, um, the blood that Jesus shed for me is the blood. That was shed on Calvary. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day to day to day. It will never, never lose. It's power, oh, cause it reaches to the highest, oh, it reaches to the highest mountain, oh, but to love it flows way down deep in the lowest, the lowest valley. It's the blood, my Savior's blood, that gives me strength from day, from day to day, to day. and it will never, never, never do, never do its power. Yeah, I, I love that, that song, um, because of what? What that song said to me was, God was so awesome that He didn't just, uh, 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 mm, He didn't just, uh, uh, care about those that ride their high horses. Yeah, nah, he could like that, baby. He'll get on your level, type of God. And uh, 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 what I love about it, uh, it uh, the, the song said, the blood. It flows way down deep in the lowest, the lowest, the lowest valley. That's where I'm at right there, right there, down there in the bottom, uh, where nobody want to go, you know, down up in the hood. I mean, and let me know, God come down in the hood, you know, he ain't scared uh, to come in the hood. <laughs> Yeah, way down deep in the low, where the low is. He come to the lowest valley. And yes, the blood, my sweet is blood. Uh, and that gives me strength from day, from day to day to day. And it will never, never, ever do us. It will never, never do his power. Yeah, he good like that, baby. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, he good like that. <laughs> yeah, that's why he don't need no defense. Yeah, he, gonna, he ain't going to lose his power. That's because the atheists say that he ain't real. <laughs> He's still the boss. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Go like that. Uh huh. Yeah, go like that. Andy, it's Father's Day. I got to go be a good father. Thank you. All for right, that. all right, all right. Uh, not thank you for dropping in. I forgot it was even a holiday. I don't much keep up with it. I probably need to call my daddy and, and um, rub on his head a little bit and tell him, I, and tell him thank you for getting it on with my mom and uh, bringing me here. <laughs> I'll th thank him for me too. Seems <laughs> great. All right now. Be well. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We got a lot of views at that point. A good God Almighty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I appreciate y'all uh, checking in. I, I got a little lost. I'm back now. <laughs> And shit, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get lost sometimes in in in, in uh, uh, what the it is might consider fantasy land. All right, but it's some uh, old man fantasy land. Some good shit off of now. I, I take me a first uh, class trip over there. Yeah, 
and it is that. No. Okay, now, uh, I see we got people out there on the outside. And, uh, and y'all sitting on the outside. Are y'all out there because y'all don't have a link to get in? Uh, hang tight, baby. I'm going to see y'all the link. Uh, so people can get in. I'm so sorry. I did not provide the link for y'all. I'm bad with that. Y'all got to help me and send me a message. Circle me and um and uh y'all help me out now uh because I haven't been I haven't been googlerized yet, okay. And so uh I'm not real uh I'm not up on the uh how to do everything. Uh Ben, I'm so sorry, baby. Uh I'm sending a link right now. Uh, I just realized that I see a lot of people outside um of the hangout. And, and, and um, watching the broadcast, and I appreciate y'all, but I do want y'all to come in if you want to come in. Okay, so I did just leave, I left the link on the outside there. So y'all can come on in the room. Come on in the room. All right. Okay. Now uh, we had got a little bit off topic. All right. I don't know if we got off topic or the conversation just kind of died out a little bit. Uh, but it's okay if we get off topic a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh, little girls. And that's not homosexual activity. Uh, he's uh -oh. heterosexual, all right? But he's still a fucking violator. He's uh -oh. still a damn pedophile, all right? Uh -oh. So, uh, somebody why y'all think that only uh, people that's gay is uh, violators I'm and pedophiles? Y'all, that's an ignorant ass uh, myth. Okay, that's all. Okay. Uh, that candy, that was a. Uh, uh, video i accidentally clicked on with candy getting on that ass all right so um and those of you who don't know candy baby let's hang tight hold what you got all right because candy good people but uh i'm known to get on that ass if that that all right and i do it in love because i love you baby all right Mm -hmm. I'm going to love you to pieces too. And I love you right on. And get yourself right on together. All right. And uh, I'm trying to uh, make sure that I make the link uh, available for everyone that. Um, Wanna come on in? They wanna come on in the room. Yeah. Um. I hope not have made her travel, you know, safe travels over where she's heading to and everything like that. I just hope all is well with her.
Okay. Okay, so I just made the uh, link. Uh, I think I uh, put the link everywhere uh, where people could find it uh, easily. Mm. And uh, come on, in the room, all you got to do is uh, click on, on the link and uh, it will allow you access into the